Hello. Please take a seat by the fire. Despite being a coastal county, Ayrshire has very few references, stories or legends associated with mermaids. But there is one story. And this is the story of the Mermaid of Noctolian. Collected by Tony Bonning in his book Folk Tales of Ayrshire, published in 2021. In Carrick is the hamlet of Ballantrae. The settlement on the shore, long ago known as Kirkubri. In those times, the land-owning family was the Gordons. The young laird was the last of his line and owned Nocdolian, an estate that included the small mountain of the same name. His land was on the north side of the river Stinshire, a stream noted for its salmon, trout and an unusual denizen of the deep, a mermaid. Her want was to swim up the river at high tide to a great black rock opposite Noctolian Castle and sing to the world, but especially to the young laird whom she loved. She had often watched him in the fields toiling beside his workers. There was no job they did that he could not nor would not do himself. He, although nobody's fool, also treated them and their families with great respect and kindness. Because of this, they gave of their best. The sea maiden understood that her love would never be consummated, but sang on regardless. For his part, the laird loved the mermaid for her songs and the way they lulled him to sleep at night. They gave him strange, wonderful dreams of far-off lands and exotic people, of warm oceans and soft breezes. That he could ever love her never occurred to him. Being the last of his line, the young laird was keen to start a family, and in time found a young woman with the right pedigree. It was not a love match, and the young Gordon never expected it. He would do his duty to his ancestors and presumed that in time love would come. Was that not how things worked? The marriage worked well enough, though he often found conversation at mealtimes a little strained. The young woman was also prone to sulking fits at any seeming slight. He found any kind of comment difficult and gradually bedtimes became almost impossible so he slept in an adjoining room that had been his as a child. Regardless of this, in time they were blessed with the birth of a son. The laird was overjoyed and spent all possible time with the infant. His wife now seemed a little warmer and attended to the raising of their child herself rather than have a nanny. The mermaid knew things had changed and grew jealous of this interloper who had come between her and the laird, so she increased her efforts. The laird, in his turn, still loved the mermaid's songs and the sweet dreams they brought, but his wife grew more and more irritated and complained to her husband, Can you not do something about that devilish creature? Its wailing is keeping your son awake at night, not to mention me. He hadn't the heart to say that he loved the songs. It would be bad luck to try and stop her, I've just learned to live with it, perhaps you can too. She stomped off in exasperation. A few weeks later, the laird had to go to Edinburgh to attend some legal matter and would be gone at least a week. He gave clear instructions to his workers, even arranging for an elderly retired couple to stay in the house to help his wife if necessary. The following day, the laird's wife called the foreman and two workers and instructed them to get sledgehammers and follow her. She strode earnestly to the river, the workers in tow. From the bank, she pointed at the great black rock midstream. I want that stone smashed until there is not a single sign of it above the water. But mistress, this is the mermaid's stain. And to interfisher, where that is sure to bring misfortune. She looked at the man, 
fury in her eyes. If you don't get rid of it, misfortune will befall you, for you and your family will be out of house and home. Do you understand me? Aye, mistress, replied the man, a look of horror spreading on his face, as it did on his two colleagues. Sick at heart, they waded into the river. The lady heard the thud of the sledgehammers as they chipped away at the boulder. Two hours later, the thuds ceased. With a smile of satisfaction, she suckled her child before placing it in its cot in the nursery attached to her bedroom. She then went to her bed and waited for the arrival of the mermaid. She could not see it, but she certainly heard it. There was an unnerving scream that entered the very fabric of the building and shook it to its foundations. Though shaken herself, the laird's wife still found nerve to smirk at her victory. Then the voice came. It seemed to enter the room as a snake enters a burrow. The woman could hear it deep in her brain. Ye may think on your cot, I'll think on my stain, but there'll near be an heir to knock Dolian again. The woman scoffed and lay gloating at the defeat of her rival. It was a while before the siren's quatrain made sense, sending a shudder of apprehension through her. In dread, she ran for the nursery. The scream's disturbance had somehow upended the cot, and the child was smothered in his own bedclothes. And so ended that line of the Gordon clan.